Hi everybody, John from Jones here, and we're going to be talking about our fall into autumn flight. So thanks for joining us. Uh, before we get started, just let me give you an idea about how we're going to work with this. I'm going to talk about each wine individually, and then we're going to pause after each wine. So that'll give you time to enjoy the wine, enjoy the day, enjoy your company. So there's no need to rush. And uh, when uh, we, when I taste first, I take a, just a quick sip. If you just had a piece of cheese or something else or a peanut butter sandwich, uh, it affects the way it'll make the wine taste. So I like to kind of clean out my mouth with the first little sip. And then when I take a real sip, I'm going to go like this. Slosh it around in your mouth, almost like you're gargling. And what you're going to do is you're going to activate the taste receptors you have all through your mouth, not just on your tongue. So try to do it. Try to leave that in your mouth for about five seconds for each one of the wines as you go through. So let's get started. Our first wine is Woodlands White, and this is the actual original wine that was had its first release in 2004. So this is really the first wine that was uh, produced and sold by the Jones family, and uh, it's been a big favorite ever since. It's been one of the biggest sellers. It's got three different grapes, and uh, those are hybrid grapes that grow really well in our, our climate here. But what's interesting is when yeast ferments the sugar in the in the wine in the, the juice and turns it into wine. Uh, you get different compounds created that you find in other fruits. So that's why when you taste this, you're not necessarily going to taste grapes. You're going to taste stone fruits and apples and citrus and that sort of thing. So look for those. So uh, Woodlands White also gets a, uh, a holiday label. If you've ever been here on our holidays, we have a really nice label that, that uh, is hand, handmade, really, and uh, looks great on, on this here. This type of wine is with a little bit of sweetness and a bountiful fruit makes it a great choice for many, many kinds of foods and cheeses, but believe it or not, I like it with spicy foods. And uh, something with a little bit of heat goes really well with this. Uh, it's very much, it's, many people find it tastes similar to a, a Riesling that has a bit of sweetness. And, and I agree with that. So if you have something like, a, think of a nice spicy chicken, fried chicken sandwich, this Woodlands White would be a really, really great uh, accompaniment for that. But uh, enjoy the wine. Take your time with the flight and uh, we'll be ready for the next one when you are. Okay, we're going to go to our number two wine in the lineup here. And what's interesting about this is there's no grapes in this wine at all. There's only pears, which come from Bishop's Orchards in uh, Guilford. And the apples are from our neighbors right up the road, uh, the Beardsleys. And so can't get much more local than that. Uh, when I first tasted this wine, I thought it was going to be more like cider, but it doesn't taste like cider at all. It's, it's, it's a wine, and uh, uh, you can really make wine out of pretty much any fruit if, it's, if there's enough sugar. But uh, this, because again, it has a little bit of sweetness, and it's got the apple and pear flavors, I start thinking about what I'm going to enjoy this with. And uh, it really goes with a lot of things. A lot of people use this with the Thanksgiving meal. Uh, people use it with the turkey uh, for, for uh, that meal. Uh, you can have this easily with uh, spicy foods again, just like the first wine, and uh, it goes really, really well. I, I also enjoyed this once with uh, potato pancakes and applesauce. You know, when you think about when you have pork or other things with applesauce, this wine is a natural uh, for that right there. And uh, you could also enjoy it by itself, but try it with something a little bit of spice and uh, maybe a little spicy pork dish, uh, oriental dish like that, and uh, I think you'll enjoy that. So. We're going to pause for the next wine and we'll be back. Okay, welcome back. For the finale, we have a red. And uh, for many years, people would come to the Jones and say, you know, I like red wines, but I, I don't like them that dry. And uh, you don't have any off dry reds. And they were right. So this wine was, was, was made to fill that niche. And uh, it's got pretty much every red that's grown, grape that is grown, grown on the farm, including a good dose of uh, Cabernet Franc in there. So it's really, there's not enough of any one grape to call it that, like a Chardonnay, for, it has it all Chardonnay and Pinot Gris is all Pinot Gris. So they needed a name for this wine. And uh, if you look at the label closely, you notice that Beacon Light. And uh, the, the name came from the, the property where Jones's grapes are grown, originally had a Beacon Tower Light and uh, that was used to help 
planes at night, think of the 1920s without instruments, and they would fly f following the beacons of lights, like lighthouses for, uh, for airplanes. And uh, when they remembered this, well, yes, on, on Jones' property was the eighth beacon, so that's where it came from. This is a great wine, again, for more spicy things. Uh, it's, it's a great base for sangria, but uh, you can chill this a little bit. I think it does well with a chill. And uh, think about barbecue. Think about something with a little bit of heat and a little bit juicy and food that has uh, some substance to it. And uh, this goes really, really well with that. It's, uh, it's uh, a wine that you could use for pretty much many different dishes. But uh, barbecue is my favorite. So if you have a chance, give that a try with some barbecue. So thank you very much for supporting your local farmers. We appreciate that. And don't forget to go home with your dragonfly glass. Until next time, cheers.